So next up are Morgan and Jonathan. And um, they will be talking about really exciting, some really exciting stuff. Um, so Morgan is talking, we'll be talking about some exciting stuff that happened at uh, um, at the um, Open Com Compute project regarding the Open Compute project. Some really exciting hardware stuff. And after that, there will be a, a recap of what happened at Facebook um, with open source firmware in general. So a general, really generalized. Uh, overview and some news about what's what's really happening. So we we're going to get some insights. So yeah, let's fire it up and ever a big round of applause for Morgan and Jonathan. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Morgan. Uh, I uh, I am a vice engineer and responsible for the Open System Firmware project in Win Win. And then, and now I'm talking about the uh, uh, Tiago Pass ordering and uh, building instruction for Linux boot. Here's the agenda. Uh, the first, uh, I will talk about the uh, uh, have a brief introduction and uh, talk about how to have a uh, retire order for Tiago Pass. And next is for building process of Linux boot for Tiago Pass. And the final is for Winwin's uh, open system firmware ready plan from uh, 2019 to 2021. Uh, Winwin is a cloud uh, infrastructure provider that develops high density computing and storage products. And we also have a REC solution for data centers. Uh, we are working with uh, customers uh, to enable open system firmware uh, in our products. Uh, including uh, NIST boot and uh, NIST foundation open BMC. Um, Telco Pass is uh, one of uh, WinWin's uh, OCB server products and it includes Intel Skylake SP processor and, and the Risberg PCH. Uh, you can find more information on WinWin website. Uh, we have verified uh, Telco Pass can be powered on with NIST boot BIOS. Uh, for retire order, uh, you can contact JKD uh, for the detailed information. Here is the keyboard list for uh, Telco Pass. Uh, you can find the information uh, of uh, processor memory, chipset, and then uh, uh, expansion slots. Uh, we have a, we will have a demo tomorrow in Facebook. Uh, please welcome to see it. Uh, about Linux boot on Telco Pass. Uh, we use uh, Linux boot on UEFI. Uh, the framework of uh, uh, Linux boot on UEFI was presented last year. Uh, you can review it on the YouTube. Uh, so I will give a brief overview uh, here. The first one, uh, extract the necessary firmware farms from UEFI BIOS for initializing the the platform, uh, like initialize uh, SPI tables. The second one, uh, NIST boot is executed as an EFI application. So the boot flow is like uh, the system boots from minimize UFI and then execute uh, NIST boot. Then the final is target OS. Uh, the following is uh, talking about how to build a Linux boot uh, for TLC Pass. First, uh, of course, you have to download the building package. A second, you need to get the patch for uh, building Linux boot for TLC Pass. Uh, I will talk about this patch later. Third, uh, uh, build the kernel image for Linux boot. Uh, you can refute, uh, re uh, you can refer. Uh, Refer to the building guide. First, uh, place the UFI bus uh, of the pass and base image into the build building package. Fifth, uh, start to build the nearest boot BIOS, and uh, you can get the nearest boot BIOS at this path. Here are the, here are the notes. First. Uh, you need to config uh, 
this convey to set to yes internal config for making NIST boot as an EFI application before building a busy image. Second, the UFI of the Tiago path is provided from win-win after ordering. Third, you may also find the uh, further information from this link. Okay, let's talk about the patch for Tiago Pass on uh, the list boot on Tiago Pass. Uh, the patch is fixed two issues. The first one uh, is uh, UFI BIOS for Tiago Pass has profiled as MMA uh, compressed sections, which are not supported by the indicator Dixie core. So this core doesn't load any Dixie and SMM modules. Uh, so we need to add the uh, parameter repack for decompressing the LCMA sections. After doing this, um, the DC call can load the modules directly. Uh, the, second issue, uh, the second issue is uh, some necessary functions are not ready, uh, like HPI tables, uh, PCI enumeration, but uh, Linux boot is already loaded. Uh, this is because the lack of dependency for Linux is executed. Mm. We need to add more dependency for preventing Linux boot loading too early. Uh, the final is for open system firmware ready play on uh, on Kubernetes platform. Uh, in 2019, we developed the features on monolithic platform first because uh, the Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes platform is not ready yet. Uh, we would like to uh, move these features to Kubernetes platform uh, after the after we bring up the Kubernetes platform. In 2020, we would like to get these features ready, uh, like uh, hardware related features, legacy, legacy BIOS functions, and uh, OEM features. In 2021. Uh, we would like to get open system firmware ready for production. Thank you. So oh, thanks, uh, Morgan and uh, Win Win Jin. My, my name is Jonathan, by the way. I'm a firmware engineer in Facebook. So Win Win, um, what what they are doing is is great. This is actually first time. Um, you can buy an off-shelf, off-the-shelf OCP platform from the market directly. Um, you don't have to order hundreds of thousands, like Facebook does, orders hundreds of thousands from WinWin. You, you can just buy one, play with it, right? And uh, uh, WinWin also did a lot of job, work that not Linux but works on it, uh, with just a few instructions. Download, and then you build it, and then you can run it, and then you can customize it, play with it. So that's great. So, so my part of the um, presentation will be um, first um, give a status update. So what Facebook is doing in terms of firmware development. So Facebook is not firmware development house, right? But we are going to be one of them. So why we are doing that? Um, and then I talk about um, for our stack of the firmware, what is the build system design? and uh, how we plan to enable our partners and work with the community. Um, so getting a community, a uh, 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 vibrant community is, is, is vital to our success. Um, so in Facebook right now, um, we are doing a network server deploying. Uh, so if you remember that yesterday morning, Wang uh, Rang, uh, had the, the code Right? So that was an announcement from our, our networking team that they build a new switch. It's great. It's a shiny new switch. It comes with a new firmware, so which runs um, core boot, Linux boot. Uh, open cellular. So um, in OCP, there's an open cellular project. Um, we build those open cellular uh, devices worldwide so that billions of people can connect with each other. What's running in the open cellular devices? Core boots, Linux boot. So that's deploying. Now, in our conference room, there are thousands of devices like this. Um, you can play with it. Uh, you can make video calls. 
uh, they run Corvo Linux boot. So we are not stopping there. We are working on computer and storage servers. So our next goal is in the data center millions of devices in our fleet. Uh, we hope we can get Corbin and Linux but I, we are hacking on it. So, so this um, presentation is about uh, what's our plan for our hacking, our, our, our design choice. So first, in the last several days, right, we heard a lot of acronyms, Slim Boot, uh, U-Boot, um, Mean Platform, um, and, uh, um, and uh, uh, Orboot, right? But for us, uh, we need to pick up something practical because we need to be able to, to get to ready to get into data center in the next one to two years. Um, and uh, um, we needed to meet our, um, our users' demands, right? Our, 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 our friends in our production engineering, they need to take care of millions of servers. How do they do it? How do they do it? So they, they, they have a lot of requirements to us. So in the end, we choose this um, solution, uh, which we use the core boot to do the silicon initialization. Then um, we put into Linux, embedded Linux corner. And in the Linux, embedded Linux corner, uh, there's you need to run FS, have a bunch of user space tools, including bootloaders. Uh, and then from that, um, uh, we, we use that Linux to boot the target Linux. So, so the embedded Linux kernel and the init run FS is on the boot around together with core boot image. Motivation. Why do we do this? What are our requirements from our customers, um, the, the, the product, the product in, uh, engineering teams? So why is debuggability? So when something happens, we have to be able to debug very quickly, right? When a save issue comes, people will, will have to work 24 hours. Otherwise, there will be a call to the police department. Um, so we need to be able to control our firmware. We need to be able to know the design and the implementation inside out. Uh, manageability. Um, our PE team, they are, they are all Linux groups. They know how to manage the OS. Now, they want to manage the firmware similar as they manage the OS. Uh, workload requirement. So. Um, uh, Linux kernel, um, so, so UFI kernel has been great, solved a lot of problems. Uh, but over the years, uh, we see that the Linux kernel has uh, some more advanced designs in terms of architecture, like uh, multiprocessor support, like for example, the, uh, the interrupt support. Uh, and also the Linux drivers tend to have more tensions. So, 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 so all that as together, that will meet our workload requirement better like the fast boot time, right? We, if in, in, in a provisioning time, you may need to boot it several times. You do need to fast. Uh, security. Um, so security comes from two things. One is the more eyes, eyeballs on the code base. It would be generally be safer. Second is um, on the Linux side, there are a lot of security features. Uh, innovation. So we design our own hardware, right? So, so when we design our own hardware, hardware we cannot wait for somebody to develop software for us, including firmware. So, so once we are able to build our own, own firmware, we know we can craft out, crank out new firmware very quickly for new hardwares, uh, green. So, so once our, our hardware retired from the data center, they are still in good shape. Now people buy without firmware, what can you do, right? You can only take it apart. Now you sell hard drive, you sell um, some NIC card, Right, but but with the open source firmware, people can just download the customize, use it. Now you can sell it as a as a server as is. So that's the green part of it. So next part is a pure system design. So here is um, the the general build process. So we use the you need a run FS source. We build the you need a run FS binary. That together with the corner source, we build the Linux boot payload. Now with Linux boot payload and a core boot source and a silicon vendor binary blobs, we get the firmware image and flash on the, uh, on the flash and then um, it, it boots up. So 
I'm going to uh, break down into each of the components and then summarize it. So the first group of components is the build environment. So in core boot, there's, um, there's cross tool chain build for, for, for ELF. So, um, so you need uh, those cross GCC tools. It's downloaded from somewhere, either from internet or from your company's copy of it. You need a tool chain for other components. At this moment, uh, it is using GCC. Uh, Corporate using GCC at this moment. And it's need, it has some requirements. It has to be no, no older than 5.00. So those are the build environment requirements. And in order to eliminate the build environment, any potential issue brought forth by the build environment differences, we use Docker to ensure the build environment is identical. You need a variable FS. Um, our choice of the technology is Go language. So, so because that's, that's for the user land, um, user land code. And the Go is a modern system programming languages. Uh, it has built-in testing facilities. So um, um, we, 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 we already, so, so, so using the Go language, um, we together with the Euroot community, uh, we did, uh, there is a full Go source uh, user land with Linux bootloaders. So the Linux bootloader, so, so um, there are probably 150 or so Linux commands are rewritten in, in, in Go and runs in Euroot. Um, and uh, we also developed uh, uh, Linux bootloaders. The bootloaders would uh, have the file system drivers and the network drivers, and we, are, we, are, we will go to the uh, local, local uh, disk and the, network and, and the network environment to find the bootloaders and the jump start it. Uh, Uroot, one advantage of Uroot is it can be source-based, like a per uh, Linux. So that means that enables fast development. So when you are doing development, you can do source-based. Uh, it's like uh, you're doing a, a script. Um, but in our um, production environment, in our, um, in our release, we use a binary like a BusyBox. So, 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 so we build as BusyBox mode, unless you are working on an individual uh, Uroot command. So this, um, this um, link is to the Uroot, and the Uroot has a, 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 a vibrant community um, that it has its charters and it has a, um, a chairing committee. Uh, in the init run FS, we also include some binaries, like flash run, like DMI decode. But, but you, um, for example, DMI decode, today we have it as a binary. We build it statically, and then we include it into Elite Run FS. But we also have some interns working on um, translating DMI decode to, to, uh, to Go language. So that will, will, will vastly reduce the size of the binary. Because in our, some of our servers, we only have 80 meg of flash. Linux kernel. You can use any stable kernel, right? For us, we use our FB kernel. Uh, the, the code as is. Um, the same code as we use at, for the target OS. And then kconfig. You can customize the kconfig. For example, we exclude, we exclude XFS support. Why? Because on our boot drive, we, 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 we never use XFS. Our data drive uses XFS. But for Linux boot, it does not have to understand it Be because it only needs to find the, the boot drive. Core boot. Uh, core boot config. So it's different for each platform. So, so, so today we built four to five platforms, including QEMU, that's four. So, so, so we have config, corporate config for each platform. And uh, um, when we build corporate image, we need to add additional features, for, for example, like vboot. So, so code for vboot is outside of the corporate um, Git repository. It has its own Git repository. Uh, we also need to add FSP. Um, we, so to make a um, full firmware image, we need other SIP uh, binary blobs, such as IFD, ME, and microcode. Put it together, you can see 
uh, there are a lot of components involved, right? A lot of different um, different things needs to, to be taken care of. So the bottom is the build environment. And then uh, the Linux boot is a part that, that serves the entire process. It includes the um, build script, uh, build configuration files, like, um, like the configurations for Corbus, the configurations for Linux kernel, and uh, some patches. Um, and you need to run FS, you have those things, like I have this as other banners, other Go modules. So there are like dozens actually for each of those one box. So it gets complicated quickly. So our answer to this is a build configuration file. So build configuration file included the information such as what components are included, where to get a component. You could get it from a public repo, you could get it from an internal repo, you could get it from a tarball, right? For example, let's say FSP, we give tarball to our partners, right? Because there's trade secret in it. You, you cannot get the, 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 the source code. Uh, what snapshot is used for a component? And what's the directory structure? So we use, a, we use a JSON file to capture this kind of information. Um, and then uh, with, 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 with that build configuration file there, with, with appropriate um, build Linux boot code base, uh, everything is built together. Configurations. So, so for the firmware configurations, um, uh, we use the Chrome OS VPD binary blob. It has, it already has a, has a very good support for it. Um, thanks for um, Google's effort. So there is like a VPD tool you can run on the build machine or on the target machine uh, in the Linux in the Linux boot. Uh, you can uh, see that as well. It shows up in the in the in the uh, CSFS. Um, configurations can be used for things like, for example, FSP configurations, right? You, you can um, um, set up, so ODMs can set up default configurations uh, in VPD, and the user can set up uh, in VPD as well, and then it can uh, use those settings to customize FSP boot behavior. Another example is you can use um, the configuration to set up the boot, blo boot lock uh, verbose level. Um, Another important thing we, we record in the VPD is the version information. So one version is the overall version, the, 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 the schematic version. Uh, we put into the uh, read-only uh, partition. And the internal versions, read, what's the internal versions? Internal versions is, it basically is where you get uh, each component uh, and with what version. So, so internal versions could be pretty long. It would have like 20 to 30 different components over there. You get an exact picture of how this image is built. Um, well, another cool thing about VPD is it has two partitions. One is read-only partition, another is read-write partition. So, 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 so with read-only partition, once the server is shipped, gets to the user's hand, read-only partition is locked. Uh, user cannot change it. So, Facebook Linux boot repo. It would include build scripts, build configurations, um, kernel config, core boot config, and the patches, patches, rare cases. Um, we will, we will uh, upstream it, and the build steps become three steps. Clone the Linux boot repo, CD to it, and then build it. So this is um, the scenarios. Let's say the, the build process enables you to do, to do what? Say, let's say, given an Im image, tell me how is it built, right? You send the image somewhere to somebody. The so people need to figure out how it is built. How was it built? You run the VPD tool. You get the internal version VPD variable. You get everything. Given a target, how do I debug? You boot it into user shell or OS shell. You just run the VPD command. Or you just run the flash run command, dump the image out, and then use VPD uh, command to analyze it. Given a build information, how do I replicate the build? You clone the repo according to the build information, then you build. So in that way, we can get a reliable, replicable build. 
built um, throughout the process. The last uh, agenda is how do we plan to enable our partners and support the, the community? So um, OCP uh, is found based on the um, based on the concept that um, open hardware uh, will uh, help with the industry innovation, right? So so um, so the, so 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 we submit we submit the OCP platform design together with our ODMs um, after. So when we are ready to go to mass production, so so we work with our ODMs on on power on uh, EVT, DVT, PVT, and the mass production. So so from the firmware development viewpoint, during EVT, DVT, and PVT, we collaborate collaborate with our partner to get it ready. We 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 get all the server features ready. We get our infrastructure ready. Right, get all the ready. Now it is ready to. To, to be mass deployed in the data center. At that time, uh, together with ODM, we will do the OCP platform submission. And that, that's we call, at that time, we are about to enable the community. When we submit the OCP platform, we submit two things. One is hardware design spec. So anybody can just download uh, and then, um, and then uh, using the design, either replicate the design or modify the design to suit your needs. Uh, on top of that, uh, a new thing we are going to do is we will, we will make the open system firmware ready. So anybody can go to the internet, uh, download the open system firmware, and then uh, you either design the hardware by yourself or you buy the hardware, buy the off-the-shelf hardware from WinWin -win in this case. Uh, after that, it's community involvement. So, so Facebook will be involved as a community member. In the partner collaboration um, phase, our philosophy is upstream only. So unless for the short amount of time, we have to stabilize our code ready for, for production, that's ready for EVT exit, for example. At that time, we will do an internal um, branch, uh, but for majority of the time, we are um, upstream only. So Facebook developer or partner developer, we submit a new code to the upstream repo. And the upstream repo is, um, is mirrored into internal repo. Of course, when we move our internal repo, we, we run rigorous tests to make sure uh, we are not, the upstream repo changes does not uh, regress the functionalities on our platform. And uh, our change, we are immediately get pushed out to the private shared Git repo we share between Facebook and its partners. And that gets looped back to the developers. For community enablement, at the community enablement, in, in, after the community is enabled, Facebook is merely a community member. Um, we probably will be, we will be a very active one, but we are just a community member. We are not uh, the owner of the code anymore, um, but we will help to maintain. Uh, all the pieces, all the pieces to make a firmware, uh, to make the, the, um, the server to be able to power on, um, is downloadable and redistributable. So that would include everything, including Linux boot code, core boot code, and U root code. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks for uh, our friends. Uh, the Silicon Vendor banners will be also be able to be downloadable and redistributable. Uh, then with this, OCP members can customize for their infrastructure as needed. Um, if, 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 if they need distribution support, they can get help from the community. Um, and they can help from professional um, uh, third party event, um, BIOS vendors. Like the same thing, they get help from Red Hat, for example. Um, all, those, all those code development, uh, we are not work uh, without a good test framework. So within Facebook, we have a lot of our own ways of doing testing, like how to get 
uh, get a server, uh, how to dispatch the test out to servers, how to connect the results. Um, we want that to the, the similar process to be also available in to the open source community um, because we do upstream first um, philosophy. That means everybody's commit to core boot, to U root. It's going to affect us. So we are developing something we call it a contest, uh, which can run test uh, in continuously on demand or per diff. And it will have the flexible uh, set uh, design to have plugins to accommodate different types of test infrastructures, including our own test infrastructure and other test infrastructures of various companies. Uh, we will open source that. Call to action. Um, so in OCP, there is an open system firmware project. Um, note that it's called open system firmware. It's not called open source firmware um, because um, OCP comes from the viewpoint of open system, system viewpoint. Uh, OSF project, uh, it used to be an incubation project. Uh, now it's a former project. So other projects would be like server project, like powers project or thermal project. Uh, so firmware is now a, uh, a very important part of OCP charter. Uh, in the OCP OSF project, we have uh, hyperscalers um, and uh, we have um, silicon vendors, ARM, Intel, and uh, there is also uh, ODMs um, and other companies like um, IBM. Um, so, so yeah, um, it, please join those and uh, join this um, industry effort. And then on the open source development side, uh, there's OSF communities, Linux boot, uh, Uroot, uh, Core boot. Another thing you can do is buy the off the shelf platform and play with it. So you can play with it today. Thanks. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Morgan. We have about time for seven questions. So if you have any questions, go to the microphones and ask questions. You can line up there. You don't have to stay back. You can just. Sorry, just a quick question on the pricing for the win-win. Morgan. Roughly. What's the rough pricing on a win-win off-the-shelf OCP? Price. 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 Um, it's more sensitive here. So you can contact the win contact window about the JKD. Uh, can you show the picture the of the of the um, of the part numbers? Like it has a several parts. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, wait for a minute. Uh, here's the content window. Okay. Okay. Uh, email. Yes, email. Uh, this is a key list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, I don't put the price on it because it is sensitive here. Yeah. Yeah. Just just to just to supplement what Morgan said, uh, you can order. Of course, this is the main part, right? In order yeah. to this, you can also order a debug card, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah and the uh, power cable so that you can hook up to the wall, right? Because normally this just gets into rack. Yes. Yeah, you could go back. Yeah, this does make me really happy too, especially that debug card. It's impossible to try to find anything like that or... Yeah. I'm afraid of electrical fires at home, so that helps me a lot. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> welcome. It also has a that sounds great. Are there more questions? Yeah. Please just, just just line up at the microphones. Update time and boot time. Update time, boot time means uh, what? 
Yeah, if you know, don't say the microphones, people can hear you and it's off the record. So sorry, so I do want to understand. Do you have any data on the boot time and the update time with this uh, this new firmware stack? Uh, no, we, we we don't measure the boot time yet. You you mean boot time? I mean, once you have this uh, core boot, how how long it takes to boot, as compared to traditional boot with you know, IA firmware. Uh. Yeah, so so um, uh, maybe I can explain a little bit. So first is with the win-win order at this moment, it is not core boot plus Linux boot solution. It is minimize UEFI plus Linux boot solution. It's still a lot faster than the full stack uh, UEFI. Um, you may notice that they have to slow down Linux boot process to to get rid of some problems. Okay. Yeah. So 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 it's both faster, but I, I do not have the number. How about the update time? Update time. Uh, oh. You mean the, the the firmware flash time? Yes. That would be the exact the same because you still have uh, flash like thirty two meg of image. But but uh, I'm sure like you know instead of writing like you could use Linux services to write to the flash, so it's going to be much faster, I believe. We use the flash RAM to yeah. to flash uh, it. The the burner. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's we faster. The burn to flash the... yeah. It's faster or is it the same? Um, David, you have some ideas about speed of flash run? Compared you want to come to the microphone and tell us something about this? <laughs> I, I haven't tried it on this configuration, so um, but uh, since it doesn't rely on the uh, typical SMI mechanism, um, the, the the thing is it's it, it is faster on its own, but especially if you have other things going on in the background. Then they won't get interrupted just because you're not going in SMI all the time. He's a flash ROM maintainer. <laughs> so we still have time for a few questions. So at uh, Facebook, uh, you did have the slide that was talking about more than just servers, and you mentioned uh, networking devices. Can yeah. You, um, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so um, in March of OCP, uh, Facebook announced a new type of uh, networking server. Um, and in the networking server, in the um, control plane, uh, the firmware uh, is core boot plus Linux boot. And we are in the process of deploying this shiny new uh, network server. Yeah, so there's a uh, a blog post on uh, code.fb.com, I think, called um, uh, well, if you search for F16 mini pack, uh, you'll see the announcement. Um, it the uh, the platform itself is based on it, it's uh, it was developed in partnership with Arista, uh, so it's actually Arista hardware, and uh, the control plane uh, uses a Broadwell DE, <clears throat> Broadwell DE. Just uh, ask one question about the license, right? This is a GNU license, right? Um, so Corbo, yeah, Corbo. Uh, yeah, license. Corbo and yeah. The, the Linux kernel. Yeah. So uh, you have your own uh, innovation of hardware. You are giving up your patent rights when you implement something. For OCP platform, yeah. OK. Yeah. I, I, I don't know whether OCP has its own license turn or not. Okay. In terms of hardware. Yeah. And then, then another thing is that I see your presentation that's also mentioned uh, by Win Win is that a lot of features like uh, ACPI, you know, TPM, Secure Boot, uh, UEFI, Capsule Update, all those things are not here. Uh, so how are you dealing with it? Yes. So to get, uh, to get, uh, um, to get a new firmware into data center is not as easy as you just boot it, right? So you need to consider all the server features as, as you mentioned, and we also need to work out all our infrastructure tools to deal with it. Um, and we also need to work out a manufacturing process, right? So, so yes, we know about that and we have spent a lot of time and we'll continue to spend time on this is to figure out all the requirements. And uh, we do have a complete analysis as far as we can get 
uh, are all the features we need to work on. And uh, uh, we do have a clear path toward it. Some of the things you mentioned about, yes, they are not there, but some of them are already there. We still have time for about, uh, yeah, I think one last question, if anyone wants to ask them something. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, okay. Jonathan. Thank you. Let's have a, a big round yeah. of applause. So, together with our ODMs and with, our, with the industry, we can make it happen.